I'm Ornella Hernandez with Web3 TV and I'm at ETCC in Paris. Joining me here we have Anthony, the co-founder of Aleph Zero. How are you today, Anthony? I'm well, thank you for having me. Uh, excited to be here, excited to see all the people, all the energy and it really feels like we're slowly getting back there. <laughs> right, I think maybe the bear market's holding up okay, I guess, if there's so much so many people that turned out today? Yeah, bear is for build, as they say, right? <laughs> That's it, all right. Well, tell me a little bit how it's going at Aleph Zero and what you guys are focusing on right now. Yeah, so at the moment we have, um, well, the mainnet is deployed, the smart contracts are live, but the privacy module is pretty much completed and now we're waiting for the compliance layer to be built out. And our number one focus at the moment is to essentially help build the ecosystem. We've got around 30 apps that are currently being built by external teams. Um, and to support them, we've got an ecosystem funding program, incubation, different partners. Um, we just want to see the app layer come uh, live and to fruition and generate users as fast as possible. So what does that mean exactly? Let's break it down a little bit. If you want that app layer to come live, how would you explain that in simpler terms? Sure. So at the moment, you know, the L1 market, there, there's a lot of different players, different opportunities. Right. And we believe where the differentiator is going to come from, obviously, is on the app layer because users don't really care technically about what the L, what L1 it's being used for. They just care about what they see on their phone or on their yeah. on their laptop and right. so on and so forth. So. Uh, you know, even after all these years, the industry, I think, still somewhat struggles with UX, for instance, or just product design or the stuff that makes the users really want to dive in, uh, help them understand the product and help them, uh, yeah, use it. Okay, and so what is Aleph Zero doing specifically to revolutionize the crypto industry? Sure, I, maybe I wouldn't go as far as revolutionize, which is if we improve it, then we're super happy about it. But uh, yeah, so uh, two things uh, on the core L1 level, and this is speed and privacy. Um, and on the app level, we just want to make sure that all of the, say, incubated uh, startups or grantees of the foundation receive just as much support on the core tech level as they do on the level of product design and UX. Okay. Um, and then we also help them with go to market, we help them with marketing, we help them with, with branding. Um, because these are still, in a lot of cases, element that, elements that are lacking from, from the space. Right. Yeah. So, so, okay, so privacy and security you think are like the top challenges that we need to tackle right away? Um, I believe so. If you, you like, if you listen to the general say narratives uh, over the last year, you know, we, we talk about privacy. There's an entire ZK movement, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, but then again, uh, still not a lot of this stuff is, is is live. And then there is a problem with compliance. There is a problem with regulatory challenges. What we've seen with uh, Tornado Cash, for instance. So. Uh, the more we think about this, like if we look into even the direction of TradFi and ask them to put assets on chain with no privacy, it's you know not not something they will be happy to do. Right. Um, yeah. I'm just waiting for him to yeah. pass. Okay, and then I did want to ask just some more personal questions like how did you even get into the space in the first place? Like what made you want to work in, in blockchain? Sure, I, that was like I think 2016 I believe. Do you remember what the price of Bitcoin was at that time? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. And I, uh, I went to my friend's birthday party. That friend is now a co-founder of A0 and he's also responsible for the design of our uh, consensus protocol among three other uh, teammates who are still still with us and uh, yeah like the idea was first to help uh, to you know to, to, to add the business bits to the technology so that was the first thing the first office was in like one you know my, my, my apartment and then we take, took it from from there okay and then what would you say maybe needs to happen to expand beyond like you know the people here at the at the conference like how can we get it to the next level to get over these issues these security privacy issues get over the fact that people think it's all scams and rug pulls um, to right. change people's misperceptions that it's crypto's dead or whatever it is so what would you say to someone that has these negative misperceptions of the crypto and blockchain industry that um like I think majority of the negative press that crypto is getting comes from uh, dishonest 
centralized slash CFI actors. I'm, I'm not saying all CFI is bad, absolutely not. But this is what makes the headlines, right? So if we hear of FTX, Celsius, all that, people associate that one to one with the entire crypto space. They don't necessarily understand what DeFi is, and then. We talk about DeFi being superior, but then we don't have any really a product for retail because the UX is not there right. and it's just significant. Where's my username and password, right? That's the main argument of normal people uh, outside of the space. Um, so I, I think this is the first thing that we need to solve, which is we need to make DeFi actually mainstream. We get there via the app layer starting from, from here and I think it's happening. There are products that are doing it amazingly well. Uh, it's just not, not enough adoption for now. Yeah. Um, so this is the th first thing. And the second is that, you know, that while speculation has its obviously ups and downs, it's, it's, it's a useful tool sometimes, uh, we kind of need to grow past this as well and focus on revenue, focus on users and start openly talking about this. Yeah. Right. Okay, I see. And then, so how would you say Aleph Zero is maybe playing a role in changing these people's misperceptions? Sure. Um, we think that Aleph Zero is carving a niche right now in something we internally call compliant private DeFi, which, you know, privacy in itself is not just a tool to, uh, say, obfuscate transactions or just uh, be able to send. Uh, you know, uh, uh, funds anonymously. Uh, but even if you think about this from the perspective of, of UX, if you want to send, um, say, 10 USDT uh, via uh, a popular uh, ERC20 wallet, then you need gas. You probably want to set up a new wallet so that nobody sees your transaction history because even if they're friends, it's kind of weird that they see everything you have in your wallet. Uh, Is that weird? Is that weird? Well, if you send them like a, something from Revolut or N26 or a normal bank, they don't see it. Right. I trust my friends, but you know. And, and then with privacy components, it's just easy. You can have one um, account, one wallet, and just use it with your shielded assets. And the second thing is private smart contracts, private computations, uh, and being able to have a value proposition for larger businesses from also outside the space. All right. All right, and then last question. I know that I Live Zero recently launched a ecosystem fund. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, so ecosystem funding program is an initiative that combines um, the traditional approach to, to grants given away from L1 foundations, uh, combines, uh, say, a network of uh, different funding partners, VCs, angels we have in the ecosystem, and uh, an incubation program for d different startups. So typically how we approach this is that the foundation grant committee evaluates uh, a grant request, then, um, well, they, the funds are provided and paid out in different milestones according to accomplishments of a project. And then we proceed to six, eight week incubation program to handle the entire like business layer in addition to the tech layer. And, um, so far we've had uh, I believe close to 20 startups that we've admitted to EFP uh, and we're still onboarding new ones of course and 30 is gonna be is gonna be a cap for, right. for this iteration okay well looking forward to see the progress of that thank you again so much for your time thank you so much for having me and yeah thanks